So let's, um, let's see how we dealt with the deal. So we're going to finally eat that cheese, right? So we've like got the milk, get the cows running, uh, worked on it. Now finally we can get, yeah, you can see there in the background a nice cheese plate. Some bread, perfect. So let's, uh, let's look at some, uh, some business analytics, some user behavior. Um, this is an, uh, an analysis that uh, we did a few, I think it's already a few years ago, but it's an, I think it's a pretty fun one. Um, we looked at listening behavior. And we looked at listening behavior in, in particular in Sweden here. Um, I used to live there, it's very cold, but it's a very nice country. Um, yeah, if you haven't visited, do, it's, uh, it's nice. Um, anyway, um, what this graph shows is um, we took a few months of data or half a year of data, um, and we looked at when do people play in the week. So we aggregated that data and we, we, we did some magic with it, and then um, you see we, we, we plotted it on a graph when people use it. Uh, when you, people use Spotify, and we start Monday at midnight and then till Sunday, uh, just before midnight, the, the night between Sunday and Monday. Um, and then we also split it out by age group. So we have different age groups, uh, from 0 to 17, um, up until 60 to 150. Uh, it's cool. Yeah, it's future proof. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Um, so, um, but, but looking at this data, there's some interesting, interesting stuff uh, happening here. Uh, first of all, you see that um, Monday to Thursday, the um, the, the, the young age group, 0 to 17, uses Spotify the most. Um, but also, they start using Spotify later, later during the day. Can you guys see that in there, that point? Okay. Um, so they, they start using Spotify later. Now, there's an interesting thing when it comes to data analysis is that a lot of people tend to confuse causation and uh, correlation. Um, there's a correlation here, but maybe you could you could look at a, a, a causation of uh, um, students or high school high school students actually going to school and therefore not uh, not using Spotify. I do not want to um, make a make a causation here and say that this is this is the case because Swedish kids go to school, but you don't know. You have to investigate. It's an interesting pattern that you see happening during the weekdays, actually. Um, and they also use, obviously, on, on Sunday, they, they use Spotify the most. Now, looking a bit closer at this, at this graph, um, there's an interesting little bubble here. And I'll show on that side here. This is the night from Saturday to Sunday, um, where you see an increased usage. It's not much, but it, it is an in increased usage of Spotify. Um, can anybody guess what that is? Parties. <laughs> it's after parties. Yeah. So people come home after going out, have a drink, put on some, some Spotify. Uh, it's very vi visible. Um, and we looked a little bit closer at this graph, and there's an interesting little bubble on the Wednesday night as well, like Wednesday to Thursday. Here. Anybody can guess what that is? <laughs> it's actually after parties, yeah. Um, in, in Sweden, there's this, um, this uh, phenomenon that's called Lilöda. Actually, I forgot to tell, I'm, I'm fluent Swedish. Um, Lilola, and Lilola is small Saturday. Um, and that's when students go out. Um, I think here in the Netherlands, when in my time, now I'm sounding probably really old, it, it was Thursday. I don't know, you guys go out on Thursday? Yeah. So in, in the Netherlands, this, this graph would show uh, that same thing probably on, um, uh, on, on Thursday to Friday. Now. If we compare that listening behavior to Spain, it looks a little different, right? Um, color coding is a little off. I was too lazy to fix that. But um, the thing is that what you see is the same Saturday-Sunday bubble or Sunday bump. Um, so it's also uh, after parties. But they don't, they don't seem to have these student nights. Um, how, wh what is uh, visible, however? You don't see that pattern of 
earlier age groups going to, I, mean, I, I call it going to school, but I should not say that, um, that they start using Spotify later. So I do hope that Spanish kids go to school. Um, uh, also, like the younger age groups, because here the blue line is actually the, the zero to 17 year olds, um, they do use uh, Spotify still the most, but all weekdays, but there's a, a lot of stuff going on here in the middle of the day. Um, and it's mostly the older age groups that, that don't use Spotify. Can anybody guess what that means? Exactly. So this is what we call the siesta effect. Um, you can very much see, but it's an interesting, interesting comparison uh, of, of like, even in Europe, it's cultural differences that, you, that are sort of explained through these type of user behavioral graphs. Um, and I can think like, how's this, how's this useful? Honestly, I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> but you could think about, you know, maybe it's, it's good to target um, around that party thing, uh, after party thing, you might want to um, uh, target ads for the local shawarma place or McDonald's if people are hungry. Uh, let's push more ads here. Uh, but interesting, nevertheless. And that's what analysts do. They have a lot of fun with data. Just, what, what is there? What can we find? Uh, it's also this experimentation that I was talking about. Another analysis that we did was, um, well, this was actually more of a story. Um, Hurricane Sandy hit the United States uh, in 29th of October 2012, and it was pretty bad. Um, we were sitting in Sweden in our office way up in the Nordics, cold. Uh, October, it's already cold um, and dark, mostly. Um, and we, um, we, were saw, we, we saw numbers dropping, like the US was doing really badly all of a sudden. Like compared to yesterday, it was like, um, so we're like, what's going on? What's going on? Are we down? Is Spotify down? Is, you know, stuff is not working? Why aren't users listening? So we started on analyzing, looking at systems, couldn't really find anything. Um, could have obviously watched the news, right? <laughs> um, but still, um, so we did an analysis of what was going on. Uh, and this is an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I thought that was kind of cool. There's a colleague of mine who, who did this. She's like, yeah, it's like geography, geographic cells. We can just represent that in Excel. Um, so we plotted the, 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 the differences in usage with the day before or the week before. And um, here you can see on the, so this, is, this, is, this sort of looks like the outline of the United States, right? Um, here's the West Coast. There's like Los Angeles and, and San Francisco here, Texas, Florida. Nobody lives here. Um, <laughs> which is very true. Uh, there are states that are like, oh, whatever. Um, and um, here's, the, here's the East Coast. So um, here, Atlanta, Washington, DC area, um, and, um, and New York, Boston. And what you can see here is that, and it's, it's not very readable on the screen, but there was minus 28% in Atlanta, uh, minus 28 in the Washington, DC area. Tri-state area was, was not doing too well. Um, and her, but Hurricane Sandy came, as, as all these hurricanes do, they come from the south and they sort of move up, up north, uh, causing havoc or wreaking havoc. Um, and then if we look the day after, stuff has sort of calmed down in the south. Uh, but you can see, um, especially around M New York, Manhattan especially was, was hit very, very hard. There was no power for two days. Um, so we had minus 85%, so almost nobody used Spotify. Everybody, yeah, they didn't have electricity or they just bounced. Um, so it's interesting to see how, you know, how users behave and how you can correlate that to, to geographical information, for example. Um, we also do, as I said before, the common bear, um, business analytics, um, or sorry, this is cheddar, a mistake there. Um, Artist behavior. We look at how artists perform what they do. Um, this is Pearl Jam. This is how Pearl Jam does. This is a week, a day by day, how many streams. I'm unfortunately not at liberty to give you exact numbers here, but this is around, this is hundreds of thousands of streams a day. This is a very common pattern for established artists, uh, artists that haven't released anything in a few years, uh, that have an older um, listening crowd, that have an established fan base. Um, Fridays, people listen the most to Pearl Jam, and Sundays the least. But it's a very common pattern, nothing special. 
Um, now look at Daft Punk. Um, and this is interesting, especially from a marketing perspective, because why is Spotify interesting for for uh, record labels, for example, is that you know at what when people play music and maybe even where, um, uh, which you do not really know when you you sell a, a CD. Um, a CD you might know the last point of sale, but most cases that you don't even know that. Um, but we can see when people actually listen to a track, and that's very very interesting information. So what this shows is um, a graph from. Um, 2013, uh, this is the release of Random Access Memories, which, is, which was in 2013 the best played album. Um, and what we see here is that somewhere mid-April, a um, new single was released. Uh, Get Lucky, as I just shown before in the previous part, uh, three hours ago. Um, and there we saw, um, uh, we saw, we saw that, the, that Daft Punk wasn't doing uh, particularly bad. This was already hundreds of thousands of streams, and then they went up into millions uh, just with that track, the one with Pharrell. Um, then we did a pre-release of the album, and when the album hit, this is 16 million or something, like in the range of like tens of millions. Um, and this showed the the um, and this really shows the power of marketing when it comes to music. The album by the release of that single, but also the marketing campaign that that Daft Punk had done. Uh, they, there was a collaboration with artists. There was like stuff everywhere. You know, you could not if 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 you didn't know that Daft Punk was going to release their new album after years, um, ten years I think it was. Uh, you would you're probably living on an island. So you can really see the impact of that marketing campaign in that way. <laughs> this is what happened when happens when artists die, um, <laughs> and. I was laughing because Menno actually mentioned Whitney Houston as well, and that was, that was, that was we did not um, talk about this before. This is uh, serendipity at work, which is, that, uh, whatever, funny. Um, so what you can see here is that Whitney Houston died, um, I think it was in, in March, uh, February or March 2012, and um, she also here, she wasn't doing very badly. This was also hundreds of thousands of streams as an established artist. Um, that people listen to, uh, and people who love the bodyguard. Uh, so, but they, they were do, she wasn't doing too, too badly. And then all of a sudden, in one day, she jumps to, like, this is also tens of millions here. Uh, she was also, unfortunately, forgotten quite quickly, uh, which is kind of sad. Uh, however, she came out stronger. It's maybe a bad, bad joke, but um, <laughs> that was very inappropriate. Um, but she. She, she, she has more listeners um, uh, now, and that's, that's because she ended up in a lot of playlists from people. So people had, have heard the song because, oh, yeah, Whitney Houston on TV, she died, horrible, and started listening to her like, yeah, yeah, that's actually, that's not too bad, or it's a good song. Uh, she, she ended up on my playlist, even though I like Pearl Jam. Go Whitney. Um, I think you guys know this guy? Yeah. Now... It's a little bit of a funny story. I was, I was, I had done this whole this whole slide deck and presentation, and I because you know I don't visit the Netherlands too often, unfortunately. Uh, but because of this, I got uh, had the opportunity to visit my dad, um, who apparently is more in social media than I am, um, which is kind of cool. He's like 66, and he does all the YouTube and he's Spotify and things. Uh, anyway, um, he told me like, yeah, have you heard about John Lennon and Imagine and stuff? And I was like, do you even know that there were there were terrorist attacks in France? Like, yeah, that that I got, but um, the not the guy playing the piano. So he he showed me, and um, he's like, yeah, it was a big thing, and especially here in the Netherlands, it was big because there's this whole debate about the top 2,000, I think, uh, because finally Queen is not on the number one anymore. Um, I did not know, and I'm like, yeah, old man, uh, for sure, really. Nah, I don't believe you. And then I looked in our system and I actually looked at the graph and the man was right, like it's a big deal. So this is John Lennon, this is worldwide. Uh, again, hundreds of thousands of streams, maybe even more. And then the, the attacks happen there exactly where the graph, um, graph goes up. Um, and then again, he ends up in playlists and uh, especially at the end of the year, you have these recaps of the year, all these lists of best 
things and worse things and whatever. Um, so yeah, there's there's still a lot going on here. Um, one more uh, interesting artist analysis that we did was um, we um, Jay Z was doing a, a tour in Europe. Everybody knows who Jay Z is, right? It's like big badass rapper. Uh, I think he's cool. His wife is beautiful. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm di digressing here. Uh, so he um, he uh, planned his his tour in uh, in in Europe and uh, Sweden. Uh, often gets confused with Switzerland. It's not the same thing, um, but small country. It's a large country, but not many people live there. So what do you obviously do if you're an American? Anything like, am I going to Switzerland or Sweden? Uh, whatever, just pick the, pick the capital. So he planned his tour in, um, in Stockholm. Um, but then the record label came to us like, hey, can, can you guys run an analysis on where his fans actually are? Um, yeah, we could try. So we um, fed our cows uh, some grass, uh, some cheese came out, and um, it turned out that most of his fans were in, in Gothenburg, which is this, this is the second city of, uh, of Sweden, and it's almost half the size of Stockholm. So, but more fans were on that, on that part of the, of the country. So you have Stockholm on the east coast and, and Gothenburg on the west coast. Most people were on the west coast. So we gave them that information, and then he said, I'm going to move my gig, yo. Um, so he moved his gig, which was, that was really our first um, sort of analysis that we did. It's like, wow, this is pretty amazing. You know, like this is what we can do for artists. Now let's talk a little bit about product analysis. And this is my last, last part here. Um, as mentioned before, A-B testing, Menno mentioned it. Um, you pick a group of users where you push a new feature to, and then you pick another group as a control group. Could be the rest of the users. Does not, it doesn't necessarily have to be. You can tweak all sorts of parameters there. Um, so what we did, and this is some time ago, uh, we looked at how to improve the sign-up flow through Facebook. Um, as you might know, you can sign up with Spotify with, when you download it on your phone, and you sign up there. Or you can go to spotify.com, sign up. Um, but also one, one way of doing it is um, through Facebook. As soon as you're, when, when you're not a Spotify user yet, you get, a, um, and you get the feed and you see your friends listening to, uh, listening to music. Um, I said, ah, oh, that's awesome. I want to listen to that particular track. Um, what, does, what happens is that there's a pop-up, this pop-up behind me, um, and it says, do you really want to do something with Spotify? Um, in our case, it says, okay, listen to music, but that's not, that that's not where we started. Um, the original button that you get from, from Facebook says download. Um, and they were thinking, like, yeah, download. Hmm. Could we do something with that text? Can, can we do just, just only that text? Um, so we changed it for 50% of our users. We changed it to okay, listen to music, and for 50% of people, we kept it to download. And this was a pretty dramatic uh, test. This is really a sort of all or nothing kind of thing. Um, but, um, and this is obviously for new users. Uh, and there was a massive boost in, in signups. We had like three times, so that's 300% more signups with, with the okay, listen to music than, than when we only show download. Um, and it's explainable. Um, downloading is scary. You know, I don't want to download software. I just want to use it, and uh, I want to listen. No, what I want to listen to music. So just by changing that text, 300%. Now then, we thought, okay, we, yeah, we got this. We, we're we're great with this now. You know, now we understand. So you know, we just give the users more information. Um, we put a screenshot of Spotify in the background, and we ran a test with like cool cover art of stuff that you might like. Um, we started auto playing music, the music that you had just clicked on, um, and we gave very clear download instructions. Now, can anybody guess what happened? This went worse. This was a bad idea. Um, so we didn't. We stopped doing all these things. Uh, we saw people like auto playing music. Like, Ooh, that's all of a sudden stuff like music comes out of my computer. I wasn't that ready. Um, and um, some of the things didn't really matter. Screenshot in the background, but um, it, 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 it either. 
people did not sign up or uh, it was the same as just that, that message, okay, listen to music. Last analysis that I'm going to share um, is we looked at ad frequency. So as you know, hopefully Spotify has a free service. If you do not know, use Spotify, try it out, and you'll love it and you're going to pay for it. Mm. Uh, but the ad, the ad, honestly, our ads, our, our ad version is very, very important. Um, and uh, it allows for people to, to listen to music. Um, so, but then the question is like, okay, we, we put audio ads between, between songs. Um, how often do we do that? Um, so in this case, I visualize this with my awesome PowerPoint skills, um, some foo. And um, so you, you, can, you can look here. So you have song, song, and then a, a, a big block of ads. This could be like three ads or something. And then you have a bunch of songs again. Um, but you could also maybe we would like to try out like more frequent but then smaller ad breaks. Um, and we gave a bunch of users one, ver one version and a bunch of users the other version. Now, can anybody guess what the result of this was? So what, what, what would you prefer? What did, what did you say? The bottom. So less, um, more frequent, but less ads in a, in a thing. Anybody, anybody the opposite? Just raise a hand. Okay, uh, so there's a few people. So seems kind of 50-50 here, uh, which is actually true. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but we learned that, right? Not everything can, can be an improvement, but we, we learned that, the, um, that it does not matter at all. People do not use your product differently because because uh, uh, ads work different. I could talk about this for hours, but I don't have to have that much time. Um, so a little recap. Um, for us, data is very important. Um, as I said, in these, uh, we have basically three pillars of data, um, with the four, different, the four different cheeses. Um, we use data for reporting. We use data in the product. Uh, data is for users, by users. Um, data is for artists. Also by artists. And for us, data is large. 30 terabytes a day, that's not nothing. And, um, but if you compare us to Google, we're, we're ants, blips on the radar. Um, so it's all very, very relative. So that, that's all I got. I think it's um, what I wanted to, to, uh, to tell you more. Um, look at your... Uh, your, your year in music if you're a Spotify user, spotify.com slash 2015. Um, I loved it. My dad loved it. He didn't know about it, so I had to tell him. Um, he actually made me add this link to the presentation. Um, because he's like, this is amazing. Um, so let's, let's listen to some program now. <laughs>